All right, in this second video, I'm going to spend a little bit of time in the vintage compressor inside of Ozone 7. This is one module that I'm really excited to see inside of Ozone 7. There has always been a multiband dynamics module within the plugin, but never was there just a stereo compressor for smoothing out the entirety of your mix. And I would often do that job inside of other plugins that I liked. And so the inclusion here of a vintage compressor is really welcome to me. And critical to, and also welcomed, is the ability to have this detection filter, which enables you to decide which portions of the signal you'd like to give more or less preference to in terms of the overall compression that's happening. It's a little bit like a multiband dynamics in a way, but the result is still very different in terms of the gluing together of your mix. So what is this detection filter? Most of the time when you are compressing with a compressor and you don't use the detection filter or any sort of side chain EQ, if you will, you get this equal frequency response, meaning that the signal comes into the compressor and anything going over the threshold will cause the compressor to reduce the overall gain. But with the detection filter, you can kind of tweak what is triggering that gain reduction somewhat. It's as if you put a EQ'd version of the signal into the compressor such that it made the compressor react differently without actually changing the tonality of the signal coming out of the compressor so much. It's more about what part of the signal is affecting the gain reduction circuit. In this case, we have a perfect example to show the difference here. And the leftmost control up here in the detection filter is in fact a high pass filter. By sliding this upwards, we can tell the compressor ignore signals below this frequency when you start to do the gain reduction. Why would you want to do this? Maybe you really like the low frequencies as they are, the dynamics of the low frequencies in the signal that you're sending through it. And really what you're trying to compress is the upper mids and high frequencies in the signal. You could use this then to slide this upwards and essentially ignore the lower frequencies in your signal and the compressor would not react to those as much. So let's play our little loop here and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to slide this up and down and you're going to see the amount of gain reduction reduced because a great deal of the gain in this signal is in that low drum hit that's happening. So you see that when this is down low, I get a great deal more gain reduction because I'm telling the compressor I do want to compress these frequencies, whereas when it's slid up here, it's as if there's a high pass filter on the input signal that allows the low frequencies to pass through the compressor unattenuated. It's a little bit counterintuitive when you think about it initially, but it is a wonderful technique. The mid-range and the high end allows us to do the same thing if you want to, say, give some additional preference to compressing the high frequencies, such as a hi-hat, a de-esser, those kinds of things. You can use this high shelf to force more high frequencies into the compressor such that it reacts to the dynamics happening in that range more. Same with the mid-range here. You have a, a bell shape that will allow you to add or reduce the preference of the compressor to those frequencies. So if we wanted to, say, in this case, ignore the rim shot that's in this sample, we wanted the crack of that to just remain pretty wide open, we could cut here and let that frequency pass through unattenuated. And similarly, let's take a listen to the uh, hi-hats, see if we can make those get into the mix here. A 
Yeah. You can hear the dynamics somewhat reduced on the uh, hi-hats when this is forced all the way upwards, and it pretty much ignores those hi-hats when it's down low. Awesome. So what should we do here in terms of this? I think I do want to contain the low end in this somewhat, so I'm going to play with the lowest band here and see if I can dial in some settings that I like. There's three different modes to play with here. One is a sharp, probably you know, very low knee value there, a smooth setting that's probably a, a much wider range knee that will smooth things out, and a balance setting somewhere in the middle. So I think I'm going to start with the smooth setting and see where that gets me. I want each of the various low end bass tones to have definition. I don't want to have a great big release here that is going to sort of smooth them all over into one very contained smear. I want each of those low drum hits to have both a nice crisp attack and then a pretty quick release so that we hear each of them individually. If this is too high, I'm just going to have them all be deadened completely. So let's play with uh, some settings here and see if I can contain those uh, low frequencies without doing too much damage to the rest of the signal. So I do want some of the super low frequencies to go unattenuated down here or just be favored less. They're so prominent in the original. And then we boosted them in the vintage EQ that now they are pretty overpowering. So this compressor is actually containing their dynamics a little bit, but we don't want to get into squashing the heck out of the rim shot and the hi-hats up there. So I've really pulled those down as far as they will go just to try and ignore them as much as possible. They're going to get a little bit of attenuation when we get into the limiter here later, so I'm leaving some space for that. Really, we're just focusing on that low end and the mid low mids here, and I think we've done that pretty well. Let me switch between the different modes here real fast just so you can hear the different characteristics of those modes. And I think I actually like the balance setting here the best out of those three. Seem to be a nice compromise between the two. And I think we've got some settings here that work well for this loop. Stay tuned for the next installment where we're going to get into the vintage tape module.